Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Bharata Rao. Today, I've come here to talk about uh, using uh, hardware provided memory access hints within the kernel for doing some efficient page placements. So that's the ideal goal. Uh, let us see uh, what we have here. And by the way, I work for IB, uh, I work for AMD. And this is the agenda. Uh, initially, I'll uh, spend a bit of time going through the basics of uh, the page access hints, uh, uh, which are the subsystems that are interested in obtaining memory access information in the kernel. Then we'll look at uh, what kind of information uh, recent platforms provide in addition to what uh, the typical information that we have and how, do we, how can we make use of them. And uh, I will spend some detailed amount of uh, time looking at uh, how this hardware provided memory access information can be used to drive NUMA balancing within Linux kernel. So I must uh, say here that this is an experiment uh, that I have done to figure out or analyze the feasibility of using hardware provided memory hints within the kernel by taking NUMA balancing as an example. And we we'll look at some of the experiment, the results that uh, have got then we can look at how uh, feasible this approach or this entire approach is and uh, discuss about the potential opportunities and the possibilities that we have moving forward with the usage of hardware provided memory uh, access hints. Yeah, so first some basics. So why do we need uh, page access hints? So typically in the OS, right? Uh, it matters, uh, especially if you are working on systems like uh, NUMA systems, it matters where the application runs and where its memory resides. So operating system is in the constant business of moving pages across, migrating pages closer to the node from where it gets accessed. And uh, in order to efficiently use the available system capacity, it keeps uh, discarding uh, pages wherever, wherever it will. And also in case of tiered memory systems, uh, it will try to see if any of the unused memory pages or cold memory pages can be demoted to a lower tier, right? And also, uh, it would try to get the memory that is, or the pages that is that are getting accessed from the lower tier and get them promoted to the DRAM tier or the highest tier that you have. So all these activities kind of need to know the page access information which are the pages that are getting access, which are the pages that have become cold. So these are the typical use cases or the uh, applications within the operating system that you would need to use page access hints. And the subsystems that typically make use of this are systems like NUMA balancing and hot page promotion, which anyway is kind of tied to NUMA balancing. So NUMA balancing uses completely uh, software driven mechanism or a fully uh, full software software mechanism to figure out the tasks access patterns and then we have systems like reclaim and lru list management which do use which uh, which do use uh, the pt access bit to find out uh, when the page a particular page has been accessed uh, and when was it accessed last right so those kind of information uh, can be obtained from PT access bit. Then there are subsystems like idle page tracking and daemon monitoring, which too use a PT access bit in some form uh, to understand uh, the memory access patterns of a workload. And they, in addition, provide uh, some interfaces to the user space to take action based on the monitoring that they have done. And of course, there are uh, system calls like migrate pages, move pages, etc., which uh, kernel provides for users to explicitly move pages uh, if they find out that it needs, it will be useful to do so by themselves. Yeah. So now look at let's look at uh, the hardware provided access hints. So I just mentioned that one of the most typical case or the usual way to get information about the page access is by looking at the PT access bit. For that, you need to walk the page tables, which is not always, uh, 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 which is kind of expensive. So if there are alternatives that exist, uh, why not make use of them? That's the thinking here. And 
to aid that newer platforms have started providing uh, this memory access information in various ways that operating systems can use uh, the platforms that provide such information uh, uh, have different capabilities they export different kind of information but the idea is to see that what would be that information which, which would be most commonly useful which will be uh, kind of basic information that would that you would need for uh, determining page access hints and to take further actions based on that uh, typically you would need to understand or you need to know the target address of the memory load and store pretty basic information and data source information where is your data coming or where where is that address located in the memory hierarchy whether uh, you are fetching the data uh, from the cache or from the dram or from the external memory etc that is the data source data source information and the cache information and for any of uh, this information which the platform provides for this information to be useful and effective uh, the expectation is that it should be presented in an actionable form where you will be able to take action based on that like whether to migrate etc right and it should be easy to consume with uh, as low overhead as possible and these are some of the uh, flavors of uh, platforms which do provide this kind of information in some way or the other uh, amd uh, cpus have this instruction based sampling and uh, intel has this processor event based sampling or pebs and then there is this thing called hot cold affinity in ibm power all of them do provide some sort of memory access information uh, the information and the kind and the way they provide all these things vary but uh, uh, the the thing the, the facility exists is what uh, matters here yeah. So now I want to spend some time looking at the details of instruction based sampling or the IBS because this is the feature that I have used uh, in the experiments uh, uh, that I have done here. Instruction based sampling is uh, a hardware facility that has existed in AMD processors for some time now. Uh, what it is useful for is to gather metrics related to instruction fetch and execution. Uh, uh, when I say metrics related to instruction fetch, it means like uh, uh, when you are fetching the instruction, uh, of course, uh, which is what is the, what is your IP? Where is your uh, has the instruction completed? Has the instruction uh, uh, retired or has it been aborted? And uh, information like uh, whether it missed the I cache, whether it uh, whether the translation missed the D, uh, D, uh, DTLB, uh, sorry, ITLB, etc. So these kind of information can be obtained by the uh, fetch uh, sampling or the fetch execution part of IBS and then there is this backend or the execution sampling or the op sampling which gathers a, or which provides a lot of information related to instruction execution. This is about the kind of inf information like uh, what sort of information, uh, what, uh, what's the kind of instruction that got executed, when it executed, uh, if it is let us say a load or a store instruction, where was my data? What is the address? Whether it missed the cache, uh, whether it was a remote access or a local access, uh, what was the state of DTLB, whether it was a miss, miss or a hit. This kind of information can be obtained uh, from the op sampling or the execution sampling. So this uh, fetch sampling as well as op sampling, these are kind of independent units and then ca they can be used separately also. Uh, one of the other important point to note here is that this entire thing this facility is independent of the PMU subsystem. What it means is that uh, we are not constrained by the number of PMCs that exist in the system because they are, they are kind of independent of each other. And one instance of IBS exists per hardware thread. And uh, typically there is no overhead in the data collection either during fetch or execution part, but overhead exists in the reporting part of it. How do you report the collected data uh, to the operating system. The way the hardware collects information is by tagging a specific uh, micro op within the pipeline and which micro op gets tagged is based on the programming sampling interval that is uh, that user can set. Uh, the sampling interval can either be specified by number of uh, clock cycles or as number of uh, micro operations. What happens is uh, when the tag, such a uh, tagged operation kind of moves in the pipeline, when it is executing, a lot of information related to that, related to that is collected in the MSRs 
and when the operation uh, retires micro op retires right uh, this uh, information is kind of uh, is reported to the operating system in the form of an interrupt and os can take subsequent action based on that more information of course in the ma processor manuals uh, to which links i have provided here so traditionally ibs in the amd processors have been used for perform for doing performance profiling uh, linux perf in fact supports using ibs based precise event profiling but the use case that i am talking here is about using the execution sampling uh, uh, flavor of ibs for doing memory access profiling and uh, let's quickly go through the workflow uh, to understand how uh, this ibs can be used to do memory access profiling uh, can't even see so uh, the way to start here is the software loads the sample count or the the rate at which it wants to do this uh, access sampling right into a into a register you can call it as max count and uh, then you need to enable the counting or the access profiling once that is done hardware starts incrementing a periodic counter for each dispatched ops when the number of dispatched ops becomes equal to the sample that you have specified either as number of ops or number of clock cycles then a micro op in the pipeline gets tagged as it moves and when it gets executed as i said information is gathered in msrs when it is retired the information is uh, moved up to the os via an interrupt that is nmi and uh, software will start taking action or expected to take action based on that and uh, in case of uh, uh, memory access profiling right what really is useful is that you really don't want to profile all sorts of instructions so some sort of filtering would be required it can be done at different levels in the software the kind of filtering that you would uh, you would be expected to do here is that uh, what is called load uh, store op filtering because uh, the information that the hardware provides would have a bit somewhere in one of the msr saying that does this sample report a load or a store so based on that you can do filtering and uh, that would be very specifically uh, specific and you can take take specific actions related to load or store operations and another filtering that is done by hardware itself which is more useful is this l3 mist filtering which is programmable a bit in the uh, control register if this is set hardware would report only those samples which are load or store and which missed the l3 cache so that would be more useful for memory access profiling which typically means that it would have hit the other uh, subsystems in the memory hierarchy like dram or external memory or uh, external uh, cache etc so this essentially helps us to improve or increase the possibility of having uh, useful samples and let's quickly look at the kind of uh, data that uh, comes with each of these samples in case of uh, load store sampling you have the precise precise instruction pointer then you have the linear address as well as the physical address of the data operand uh, which is which becomes important because it's not just the linear address you have the physical address which means if you are feeding this to the subsystem which can directly take action based on the physical address there is no necessity of you further walking the page tables to figure out the physical address so it's already available there and uh, exhaustive information about data source like where it ca came from the cache dram or the external memory etc then there will be indications about whether the access was local or the rem or it was was it remote the cache cache, cache miss information etc would uh, would be present yeah so uh, with that understood I, i would like to spend some time on uh, basics of numa balancing because this is the subsystem where i am using ibs to consume the data provided by the uh, data provided for uh, by ibs for memory access profiling so uh, some basic uh, let let me give some uh, very quick introduction about uh, numa balancing so it's a subsystem that exists in the linux kernel uh, which tries to collocate the task and the memory that the task is accessing 
typically in uh, multi node NUMA system, uh, what it tries to do is it tries to migrate pages or the tasks to across the nodes to ensure that you most of the times you end up having local accesses so you don't take the cost of cross node references. The way it is done is that uh, it needs to understand for doing this it needs to understand the uh, page access patterns or memory access pat patterns of the task for that it is what it does is it uh, employs a software based mechanism of scanning process address space periodically going through the PTEs, marking them as prot none and when you do that the next time such a page gets accessed it will result in what is called a numa hint fault and this is the time or during the fault time we collect all the information uh, related to the access importantly where is the page that is getting accessed and from where it got accessed, who accessed it, and where the page resides. Based on this information, subsequent action uh, is taken by NUMA Balancer. Essentially, what it does is it kind of categorizes categorizes this fault information as whether it was a local fault or is it uh, was it a remote fault, was it shared or private. Based on all these uh, categories that it determines, it builds up uh, some information, accumulates uh, generated uh, generates aggregated stats and build some heuristics based on this uh, and finally arrives at migration decisions uh, uh, based on these faults. So uh, another, uh, the last thing that it does is that you don't want to periodically keep scanning the process address space at a constant rate because uh, workload, you, the expectation is that as you move pages across, as you move tasks around the convergence happens and it will identify that and kind of slow down the scanning rate. So uh, that's one thing. And uh, the last thing I want to note here is NUMA balancing is a subsystem which is also used for hot page promotion. The part of that is uh, hot page promotion uses the scanning part of NUMA balancing to figure out the access patterns. The other part of migrations and the decisions uh, of how to migrate, uh, et cetera, is kind of a little different because traditional NUMA balancing takes into account the false stats and the hot page promotion uh, works on a different strategy. Yeah, this is some pictorial representation of what I described uh, just now. The top one is about the uh, traditional NUMA balancing. The bottom one is uh, the uh, flow where IBS driven NUMA balancing uh, is shown. And it shows where the data coming from IBS can fit in. As you can see in the left hand side, there is no need to scan the PTEs or uh, look at the address space because hardware itself is giving the memory access information as and when it happens. Based on that, uh, uh, you get the interrupt, as I said, and this access information or the access data that, that is coming from the hardware is fed to this NUMA balancing logic. So I have not changed the balancing logic. Essentially, the idea is to replace the scanning and the software-based mechanism of access by the hardware-provided hints. So the next two steps are the same steps that exist in the traditional NUMA balancing. Instead of acting on the NUMA hint fault, now it acts on the access data provided by the hardware, which is via the IBS, accumulates the fault stats, does the same thing that it would do with the accumulated hint faults, and takes subsequent actions of migrations or whatever. And finally, similar to the way it adjusts the scan rate of uh, the uh, in the default or the traditional case, you, it can adjust the scanning rate as well. So th this is the uh, flow, and this is how it fits in. Yes, please. To do this, uh, you know, profiling the um, uh, memory accesses within the VM, right? Yeah, so this is not about uh, profiling within the VM, but if you have a VM running, IBS is capable of getting memory accesses gen that get generated from the guest and figure out its host physical address. Based on that, 
pages can be migrated transparently across nodes in the host. Yeah, I, I was a little skeptical on that because IBS might not work correctly, if I understand correctly, in, in, within the VM. Sorry, come again. It, I think IBS or, or PEPS may not work correctly inside uh, the VM because of the identity maps, like the counters we have, you know, uh, the guests think that we're using sort of some counters, but uh, the host is using a different counter. I mean, those are right. That is uh, that's no problem. That's not the use case I'm covering here. Right. So, sorry, I, I was point out is like since you are doing bell metal, right? If there are systems who's running VMs along with other host level jobs, right? If IBS is not able to provide information for those VMs. Isn't it a result incorrect? IBS will be able to provide information about the VM, the accesses that come from VM. So you're saying that IBS will have to be run inside the VM? No, 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 no. Okay, sorry. So IBS won't run in, inside the VMs. Mm -hmm. IBM, IBS will run in the host and it is capable of capturing the accesses that result from the guests. I see. So you're when, saying, if the uh, you know if the vCPU is running on the sum of the CPUs, you right. run IBS, it is still able to ac uh, get information. The memory right. access is coming from the guest. Correct, and it is able to correctly identify the host physical address for that. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Um, is there anything similar for ARM64, the memory, hardware memory hints? And if not, is there any hardware? Similar, uh, can you repeat? Uh, similar where? Is there any similar uh, memory, I mean, hardware memory hints for ARM64 platforms? ARM64, I'm not sure about. Uh, uh, Intel does have. ARM yeah. um, platform, they have the hardware IP named SP uh, STAS. Stas static uh, profiling extension, so it's CPU ARM V8 extension, so it's quite similar with like the, this kind of thing. Yeah, but it's different seeing that it's like the hardware trees here, like the hardware event. So it's here may be different because that is a hardware trees you need to decode it. So this is why maybe I don't know how to you know that some this this there has something that you need to do in means color. But for the hardware tracing data, you how can you do the decoding in the means color? This might be introduced that effort by the decoding itself. Yeah. So I just explained the high level details of where uh, IBS driven IBS fits in in the NUMA balancing workflow. Uh, this is some implementation bits uh, that I want to touch upon. Similar to the NUMA balancing, uh, here the access profiling is done on a per task basis. It's kind of tied to the regular uh, to NUMA, mo NUMA balancing modes, which is the regular mode as well as tiered memory mode uh, for hot page promotion and the other uh, default case. And similar to the per task NUMA scan period, uh, we would have per task sampling interval that keeps varying and that keeps changing. And uh, one of the things that is kind of has to be done in addition to what you typically do with NUMA balancing is that uh, when, when the task enters into the kernel, you don't really want the IBS profiling enabled and that's where you need to uh, disable or uh, program the MSRs to disable uh, profile collection. So there are hooks in the kernel entry and exit points where you reprogram, uh, uh, disable and re-enable when you come out of uh, the kernel. Uh, this is some additional step that is required. And uh, once you have uh, IBS interrupt coming in the form of NMI, uh, uh, a minimum amount of uh, filtering that is required is done. All the information is read from the MSRs. And uh, what currently I do is kind of raise a task work. Um, and in the task work, you kind of interface with the existing NUMA balancing logic and let the NUMA balancing log logic run from the access faults that is coming as uh, coming from the task work context. And hence, all the migration, et cetera, will happen in the task work con co context as opposed to the uh, uh, the fault handler context that typically happens in the NUMA traditional NUMA balancing. And uh, 
uh, of course, the hot page promotion also works in a very similar way. Uh, the only thing that is different uh, is about a metric that hot page promotion uh, maintains. Uh, it has a metric called a NUMA uh, hint fault latency, which is the time difference uh, between the scan time of the PT and the eventual uh, the hint fault, which kind of is an indication of how how hot the page is. In our, since there is no scanning involved here, the kind of uh, idea I had is to uh, have this latency recorded as a time difference between successive accesses, which kind of tells us uh, how hot the page is still. And I have an RFC patch that I posted uh, early uh, this year, uh, which had this implementation going. And uh, let me come to the test setup and the results uh, that I have seen with this experiment. Any questions before I go into the test uh, results? Sorry. So the CXL node you are talking about is just a memory node. So this yes. can work with no memory less, sorry, CPU less NUMA nodes also. Correct. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So this is the test system I have. Uh, it's a uh, 2P three node uh, AMD Zen 4 system. Uh, it has two regular NUMA nodes with CPUs and one CXL node, 256 CPUs on either, uh, on both, uh, an individual nodes and 128 GB memory attached to each of the nodes. And the distances look like that, uh, 10, 30, and 60, the last one. The node number two is the CXL node. And I've written a micro benchmark to essentially test all these things. It is a threaded application that uh, initially provisions a fixed amount of memory, 8G is what I have taken here, on a remote node. It can either be when you're testing traditional NUMA balancing, it is the remote node is the node one. If it is CXL, it is node two. And what it does is it has 64 uh, number of threads and concurrently they write uh, to random bytes in the allocated range. First it get allo gets allocated in the uh, remote memory and from the local node, all these 64 threads continuously keep writing to random memory bytes and there are some 1 billion accesses per thread that happens and uh, provided a delay of around 100 microseconds between uh, 1000 accesses just to ensure that we just don't bombard uh, the migration uh, subsystem with uh, so many migration requests. Of course, only 4K pages is what I've used and the benchmark score is a measure of how quickly the total number of the fixed number of accesses are able to complete. The idea here is that NUMA balancing is expected to kick in and migrate all the 8 GB of memory or however much that is possible from the remote node to the local node. That's the measure of uh, the uh, success or the, uh, uh, that's the measure of, uh, that, that's the measure that we are interested in. And what are we evaluating here? Uh, what we are evaluating is that it's not about uh, things won't be very dramatically different uh, if you are using IPS provided access hints. Uh, the, the, the things we are, uh, we are interested in is that we want to see whether the hardware provided access hints can match the existing software based mechanism. Can it be ever a replacement of the scanning mechanism that we have in NUMA balancing? And if so, and what are the other possibilities and other subsystems that can make use of it? And also the overhead part of it, whether it is tolerable. So this is the first experiment uh, where uh, I have the remote memory on a regular node, node one. So I have the default uh, uh, NUMA balancing set to one, which is uh, balance across regular nodes. And if you see the benchmark score, uh, both of them are kind of behaving in a similar manner, 203 versus 205 seconds. And uh, if you look at the PT updates for the default case, there are so many PT updates that happen uh, due to the scanning process, that uh, scanning step that is present. And if, you, if hardware is providing hints via IBS, uh, obviously you don't have any PT updates to make. And then there are hint faults uh, I have 
um, called the access faults that come from IBS as hint faults here to just to compare. And uh, the other metric, which is always of interest, is number of pages that get migrated uh, around um, all the, uh, the amount that is shown here is 209, 7278, roughly amounts to 8 GB of memory. So in both the cases, more or less uh, same amount of memory gets migrated. And the last two metrics are related to IBS, how many events that get reported by the IBS subsystems, which means uh, how many times the IBS interrupted with the access samples uh, and uh, how many of those samples were useful to us. So that's the metric I have. And uh, yeah, this is the case where both uh, the traditional NUMA balancing as well as IBS kind of match with each other. And uh, uh, though the eventual benchmark score matches, right, there is slightly difference in behavior. If you look at the blue graph, this, this chart shows the number of pages migrated versus time. So how much time does it take to migrate all those pages and in what way it migrates, fast or slow compared to each other? The blue one represents the default case. In the default case, which in, in, involves scanning, right? Most of the times it is heavy migration at the beginning. Uh, but in case of IBS, the samples get reported gradually and hence the migration process is also pretty gradual. Eventually they both achieve uh, almost similar number of migrations, but the route they take kind of varies. Uh, at least in this use case, uh, the effect is not seen on the benchmark score. So this chart uh, kind of plots the number of accesses completed for one thread that I have chosen out of 64 threads. All of them do equal number of accesses. If you look at, uh, compare that, right, uh, uh, versus time, more or less they match. So that's, this has been the observation with uh, uh, regular, NUMA, uh, regular NUMA nodes. Now the next, uh, next experiment is with uh, the same experiment uh, with CXL being, as, uh, being the remote node. Here uh, things vary. Uh, what is happening here is the benchmark uh, score also a kind of uh, a default, score, uh, default case uh, is a little better than uh, the IBS case. Uh, the number of migrations, if you see, right, uh, the hint faults and number of migrations, these are kind of comparatively less uh, when you look at the uh, default case. That is the reason uh, because of which you are not migrating enough number of pages and hence your uh, cross uh, CS, CXL access latency matters here and uh, you end up uh, accessing more number of uh, pages on remote, road, remote node rather than local node. The access pattern for uh, the default case remains very similar. Most of uh, the migration pattern, most of the migration gets completed upfront, whereas for the CXL case, it is really, really gradual because that is the way the IBS is reporting the samples to us. And uh, the effect of that is seen in the way the number of accesses that uh, uh, get completed over time. In, in case of uh, the default case, it is able to move faster with respect to number of accesses, whereas uh, uh, in case of uh, IBS, since we are not completing that uh, migration faster, right? So we are having that lag. Could you increase the initial uh, IBS sampling rate to sort of pick up the pages quicker at the beginning and let it auto adjust? Yeah, those kind of things are possible. Uh, what I have done right now is that uh, it's not a fixed sample that I'm working with. So I have a minimum, I have a maximum. Similar to the NUMA balancing scan rate minimum and scan rate maximum. I have a sample rate minimum and a sample rate maximum. And based on the convergence of the workload, you keep varying it. Actually. So that's what I have done. Uh, there is always that you cannot really go below certain because you would end up getting so many samples and kind of take a lot of overhead because of that. Can you pass on the... Um, so how, how different will the results be when you enable THP actually instead of just 4K pages? Uh, THP, I have not done a lot of runs with THP, but uh, 
it is kind of matching the pattern is what i would say now so i'm assuming with uh, bigger huge pages like you'll have less faults hmm. and you'll have somewhat comparable i mean the only advantage here is uh, scanning is done in hardware instead of software scanning uh, scanning is not done basically in case of uh... no in case of ibs the scanning is done by hardware so that's the only advantage but when you enable thp and the block size is a uh, larger then i get i guess the other scores will be similar i've not i've seen similar pattern actually so okay those were the two main experiments that i wanted to show and uh, and also look at the overhead data that we have um, the comparison is different metrics one is the scan time in the default we have that scan time which is not which doesn't exist with the hardware hinting and the second one is the fault or task work time so in case of uh, default all of the heavy lifting is done in the fault time the migration etc in case of uh, the hardware hinting or the ibs the heavy lifting is done not at the interrupt or the nmi handling time but uh, most of it happens in the task work context so when you put together those two uh, that's how uh, the numbers look like more or less matching i would say and the additional overhead exists as i said earlier is with respect to the user kernel entry exit points where you would have to enable disable the ibs which involves pro programming of uh, an msr register that's the overhead and uh, the total numbers look like that and um, yeah and i've kind of given numbers about um, kind of normalized it for uh, per fault as well as the per migration so not much difference but uh, yeah this is how it typically looks like doesn't look all that alarming but yeah there exists a little bit of overhead right now and i believe that playing with the sampling rate would probably mitigate some of these aspects yeah so i had a quick experiment that i did on virtualization as well um, the the experiment here is that uh, i have a guest running kvm guest with all of its we all of its vcpu pinned on to node 0 and the entire guest ram uh, is kind of provisioned on a remote node which is node 1 on the host and what we do is that uh, for that we manually move the guest uh, guest ram from node 0 to node 1 so all VC, uh, vcpus are running on node 0 and the guest ram is completely on a remote node then you run this micro benchmark inside the guest essentially it's a local access uh, you keep running and see how the host is able to migrate the pages belonging to the guest ram based on the access hints that get generated by IBS. And this is the sort of results I've got. These are some initial results, uh, not really done multiple iterations and other things uh, like have done for the other experiments. Uh, it does seem uh, kind of better. Uh, though the number of uh, pages migrated is considerably lower and the number of uh, Hint faults that get reported uh, is also lower, but uh, somehow for the virtualization use case, uh, it does seem to help. Uh, need some further analysis here, but I just included this slide to show that uh, the virtualization possibility is this basically. Uh, IBS. So you, you have a conflicting case well you you know the host is using IBS and the guest yeah. okay I, I'm a customer I want to use IBS as well great I mean I want to do it for my own workload yeah you can't use both of them anyway I mean either you have to be in the host or in the guest so you will have right to... in that case I mean it might be a little bit conflict right you have to turn off uh, or which is one of them yeah yeah so that's that's in the future basically this is a experimental right, study right, right. i'm trying to right. see the feasibility of things so right <laughs> um, today we don't have ibs inside guests it's only right. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. how much time do we have uh, okay. can Almost closing uh, uh, can i be sorry 
Can IBS also handle cache access? If you can handle cache access, I think you can also balance between chiplets. Uh, so you are saying, does IBS also handle cache accesses? Yes, can you track cache access using IBS? Oh yeah, it if does. So, if so, you can also migrate, uh, you can balance between chiplets within a single- Correct, module, right? you can take all those decisions basically based on which cache, is it really remote, remote cache or uh, two, it depends on two things, right? Uh, where is your actual data residing? Is it really remote? Or, and do you have a cached, access, cached copy of it somewhere? So you need to take a decision whether do you really want to migrate or is it good enough? The cache access is good enough. Yeah, you can just just track whether it's a local cache access or remote cache access. Oh yeah, it gives the it. migrator thread between the chiplets even within a single yes, demand. Yes, can That's, be done. Yes, that could also give you some performance benefits. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You said uh, we could optimize this by changing the sampling rate. So for this experimentation, what are the sampling rate we are using? I'm using minimum sampling rate as 5,000 uh, micro ops and the maximum have kept as 20,000. And the default is every task starts at default of 10,000. Based on the convergence, it can either go till 5,000 or 10, uh, 20,000. And the MSRs are programmed every time any task gets into the kernel? Correct. And then every time in the task switching path, context yes. switch path, you program it. Yes. Can we do it like for particular, uh, let's say I'm I'm running like customer workload on bare metal, but I want only for that process, not for everything else. Like just that process, I'm worried about the performance of that. Any pages related to that being migrated to the Numa node. So I don't, can we do that? You can do that, but Numa balancing kind of, uh, see all those special cases can be done, but in this experiment, I was trying to replace the scanning part of the NUMA balancing with this. Since NUMA balancing right now cannot work for individual tasks, it works for everybody yeah. basically. So there were patches, I think, to enable it for just individual patches. I don't think it uh, it went in. So if that is there, this will automatically work. Uh, okay, so it's all backend, work. like NUMA's, uh, NUMA balancing backend, it's all fit. So the metric is changed. So exactly. if the NUMA balancing supports for process, yeah. uh, then you can support. It doesn't have to be that way. It, it is just that in this experiment, I have chosen NUMA balancing as a subsystem where this can be employed, basically. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And uh, uh, then there are some other uh, benchmark numbers. Okay, I think I'll quickly skip because the slides are going to be around. So yeah, this is where, uh, uh, wanted some inputs uh, and feedback. So we did see that uh, it's an experimental study. There are cases where it benefits. There are cases where it kind of suffer suffers. And uh, uh, there are uh, situations where you would want more number of samples, but uh, not available, et cetera. There are limitations. Um, I want to know, like, how does this approach look like? Uh, what are the possible opportunities? Can we use? it in other subsystems. Can we use it to replace the PT access bit, uh, reading of PT access bit from uh, within uh, LRU subsystem? So what, what's the opinion? So we saw something like this as LSFNN this year. Correct. Right, uh, by IBM, I think. Anish was talking about it, I guess, yeah. Right, so you, you're aware of that, that's good. Yeah. Um, I really like the idea of the the uh, cache monitoring actually more than the page tables because it, it didn't seem like we have a win here on the page tables, but but the migrating of the tasks and 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 putting them on the right cores is an upcoming difficulty we're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think there's something later after this conference about that, mm. um, and if we can get more view into what's going on even in there, it would be great, right? And and if these counters let us do that, that that is definitely something worth exploring. Um, it would be nice to know the overhead of what time we've spent page table scanning on our side versus how much the CPU uses in your tagging so we can finally grain tune what you're doing with different uh, overheads, right? And that would be really cool to see. Sure, thanks. Yeah. So um, 
there were other ideas that were proposed in that LSF MM session uh, in May, right? So there were. Yeah, we can discuss it offline. I think. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for listening.